it's pretty much documented that younger voters turn out on a presidential election than a non-presidential election. So uh, there will be a presidential election in 2012. We'll have younger voters. More people will have been able to see the havoc that drug marijuana money has been causing in Mexico and elsewhere. Uh, They'll see that it isn't working. They'll see that our children can get marijuana more easily than alcohol. Uh, They'll also see that, of course, uh, we have young people selling marijuana to each other on their high school or college campuses all the time. Why? Because it's illegal. They are not selling Jim Beam bourbon or Budweiser beer. Uh, So people will recognize that as well. Uh, The main guns of the war on drugs are aimed at people of color and also our children. And they will they'll simply stand up and say, no, enough is enough. And another thing I think that really hurt uh, Prop 19 was uh, Governor Arnold, uh, when he you know came out a few weeks earlier before the uh, vote with the uh, decriminalization. I think that really put a monkey wrench in the whole you know, push to legalize marijuana in California. Well, maybe, but I still applaud the action. Uh, you know, anything that would take people out of the criminal justice system for what they put into their bodies as adults is a good thing. Uh, and honestly, it, it, it shouldn't have made any difference. I think it did. It may very well have changed people's, uh, some people's votes. But again, it's just a question of time. Uh, that, uh, all of us in the drug policy reform movement know that the outcome is clear. It's ordained. It's just a question of when. And the sooner, of course, the better. We'll, we'll save people's lives. We'll keep people from ruining their lives, save a lot of public treasury along the way, and uh, use those money for things that work. I mean, in this area, like anything else, what works? Education is working really well with regard to cigarettes today. The worst thing you could do uh, is make this killer drug, namely tobacco, illegal. Just bring Al Capone into the cigarette distribution business. But getting honest information, regulations, social mores, that's what's reducing the smoking of cigarettes. And we should do the same with these other drugs. The second thing that works is treatment and uh, prevention. A drug treatment, according to the Rand Corporation, uh, you get seven times more value for your tax dollar by drug treatment than you do incarceration, even for heavy-using drug-addicted people. A third thing is, of course, economic incentives. And like we were talking a few moments ago, the economic incentives are all on their ear now that all of the incentives are to go out and sell drugs. That's a Horatio Alger story of, of today's America. So we need to take those profits out of there. And the fourth thing that works, and I hope people have been saying, when is he going to get to this? It's individual responsibility. You know, I know that sounds like a radical issue, but it really is important. Uh, Hold people accountable for what they do. And the higher level, of course, as a judge, I should be held to a higher standard than the attorneys or than the law enforcement officers or the citizens. Higher area of responsibility you have in our world, head of a corporation, whatever, the higher level of responsibility you should be held to. Those are the things that work, and uh, the punishment has its place, but mostly uh, as a deterrence, uh, it loses its impact after 30, 60, 90 days, maybe 120, uh, unless you're talking about violence, unless you're talking about removing somebody from society, uh, and there are a lot of people that should be removed from society, those that are sociopaths. I I agree entirely, Your Honor. We're about to go to break, and I agree. 100% 100% about individual rights and responsibility. You can't have individual rights without individual responsibility. Final segment with Judge Jim Gray, his website, judgejimgray.com. You're listening to Freedom Files live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Freedom Files, Freedom Files. weekday, Files. Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Central on American Freedom Radio. 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 segment with uh, my guest, Judge Jim Gray, his website, judgejimgray.com. And before the break, we were discussing uh, individual responsibility. And this is something, Your Honor, I talk a great deal about on my show. I'm all about individual rights. Your right to do whatever you want to do to yourself, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. For example, if people wish to drink or smoke cigarettes, that's fine. But don't, you know, 50 years later, when you have lung cancer, I don't think they should have a right to go and uh, sue uh, the tobacco companies over it. Well, there was, there was a little more complication in that, James, as I understand it, because the tobacco companies actually changed their product. They manipulated it to make it more addictive, and then they advertised that, of course, it was not addictive. So that's what did them in there. 
But otherwise, you know, you're right. And as long as it's just the natural substance, put out education, uh, boy, I tell you, the only good thing that came from my mother's smoking addiction was that I grew up just hating cigarettes. Uh, but, you know, that's what she was going to do to make tobacco illegal, make her a criminal, uh, have Al Capone uh, selling her tobacco and stuff. It just doesn't work. And basically what I say, and it's true, prohibition never works as well as regulation and control. Why? Because as soon as you prohibit a substance, uh, you then give up all of your ability to have anything whatsoever to say about it. You know, it's quality, it's quantity, it's place of sale, certainly it's price, age restrictions, all of that. So we, instead of moralizing about these drugs, dangerous as they can be, we should regulate and control them and manage them. And that's eventually where we will go and will be an awful lot less harmful once we do that. Responsibility is key. And in fact, on this subject, you know, there's Robert Downey Jr., who is, will be a lifelong heroin addict. Uh, he's recovering. He's doing real well now, but he will never recover. He will always have that craving. But it makes as much sense to me to put him in jail for that problem as it would have Betty Ford in jail for her alcohol problem. You know, it's the same thing. It's a medical issue. Bring these people closer to medical professionals that can help them instead of rendering them automatic criminals and pushing them farther away. But if Robert Downey Jr., Betty Ford, James, you or I drive a motor vehicle impaired by any of these drugs, you know, heroin, marijuana, cocaine, alcohol, bring them to me. That's a crime. What's the difference? Now, by their actions, they're putting our safety at risk, and that's a wholly different circumstance. That's a legitimate criminal justice function, and eventually we'll get back to doing just that, and people will be so much better off. I agree entirely. I agree entirely. I mean, I don't have a problem with someone who to chooses to drink as long as they, A, either do it in, you know, in the confines of their own home, or B, they have a de designated driver. But the moment they get behind that wheel, and they're, you know, it, it doesn't matter how much they've drunk. They, they're still intoxicated to whatever degree. They're still, the, re the reflexes are not as good as they would be sober, and they are putting other people's lives in danger. And I, I think that the, the, you know, that's, that's not good. I think they do need to face charges. I mean, a prime example, like um, a few months ago, uh, I read this article about this guy who uh, got his ninth uh, DUI in Texas, and they decided they'd go, they went ahead, and they, I think they sentenced him to life in prison. And I'm just wondering, why, why was he allowed to be on the streets after uh, eight DUI convictions, let alone nine? Well, that, that's right, and we did that uh, here in California. Uh, honestly, I'm proud to say I probably put in the first drug court in the United States of America back in 1984 with regard to alcohol-related offenses. You know, we would screen out so-called first offenders. Now, we all know that there's no such thing as a first offender. By the time they're arrested, they've probably done it 20 to 50 times. But we'd screen them out and put them into a program to coerce them off alcohol because otherwise they were, they were going to be recidivists. They were going to drink again, they'd drive again, and then they'd blow through a light and kill somebody. So, so that's the deal, and, that, and that's where we have to go. Individual responsibility is key. But as far as an adult is concerned, you know, you or I tonight could go home and drink 10 martinis. Obviously not a safe thing to do, medically a harmful thing to do, but not illegal unless you beat up your spouse or hit somebody over the head with a pool cue or get behind the wheel. That's the difference, and, and, uh, and that's where we should go. Definitely, definitely. I agree with you. I, I discuss a lot of these, you know, in my book. Uh, it's a recent book, a Voter's Handbook, Effective Solutions to America's Problems. It basically takes libertarian thought, responsibility, and applies them to our education system, our health care system, certainly the criminal justice system, and more. Uh, and when I endorse copies of my book, I almost always say, you know, we of liberty understand that there really are effective solutions to these problems. And it's basically the libertarian approach of responsibility, education, uh, and, uh, and reduced size of and, and intrusion of government as long as you have that fair and neutral uh, and advisable uh, criminal justice system, uh, things work. Definitely, definitely. And uh, in your uh, latest book, A Voter's Handbook, you uh, touch a little bit on the education system. In the final moments we have left, uh, what do you think is the main problem with the education? You know? James, I was, I, I was speaking to Milton Friedman the first time I ever met him, and what a brilliant man. And uh, this was on a drug policy discussion, but at a, at a recess 
he was talking about education, and I was just listening to him, and I asked him a couple of questions, and he said, well, Jim, let me ask you two questions. The first is, if you were the parent of a college-age child, where in the world would you want your child to go to get the best education that he or she could? And I said, well, I'm not sure, but probably the United States of America. He looked at me and said, yes, I think you're right. Second question is, if you're the parent of a high school-age child, where in the world would you want your child to go to get the best education that he or she could? I looked at him and said, well, I'm not sure, but I think probably not the United States of America. He said, I think you're right there, too. You know the difference? We have competition in college. We do not have competition in high school. And with that, he converted me to this school choice, school voucher program where you empower the parents. They have a piece of paper in their hand. It's called a voucher or a, or, or, you know, a scholarship or whatever you want to call it. But they can take that and invest it in any school that they choose for their child to be educated. And then the schools will react they will give quality, just like we used to have. They will give a lot of originality and integrity. And if you want your child to be strong in the performing arts or in mechanics or a philosophy of doctor of philosophy or whatever, the free economy, the free market will adjust and will provide that. We'll bring excellence back. We will, we will put on programs that work. And we've gotten away from that. Get the federal government out of education completely. Uh, honestly, get the states out as well. I agree entirely, Your Honor. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Judge Jim Gray was my guest. His website, JudgeJimGray.com. You can uh, find out more information about him as well as his books. Be sure and uh, buy his books, JudgeJimGray.com.